My mom found out I cut my hair off, and she's mad. But she don't understand. If I look like a girl, I won't get anybody like I do looking like this. So that's the way I look. Brandy Tennille Cook is a three-time veteran of Georgia's prisons. So it's time to go to lunch. It's cold but sunny. Here, Tennille goes by T, a nickname born from nearly 10 years in the system. What's up? What's up, baby? And well known throughout Georgia's female prisons. Can we get some? Can I get some? What's up? What's up? What's up, baby? <laughs> Chad, what are they having for lunch? Not a damn thing. It's like I'm a celebrity in prison. All right, that's what's up. It feels good. Probably shouldn't, but hey. Guess what's up? Yeah. T grew up just south of Atlanta, but for now, home is two hours north at Lee Arendale State Prison, Georgia's largest facility for women. From minor shoplifters to murderers, nearly one half of Georgia's female offenders do their time here. This is where inmates settle in to finish their sentence or make prison part of their life. Arendale has plenty of options to inmates for rehabilitation, such as GED classes and drug treatments, trade schools and specialized training. But with prison population soaring, attendance is limited. And back in the dorms, prison society can also take on a life of its own. It's like an all-girl college campus with barbed wire fences. That's exactly what it is. It's just like another little city. But it's all mind games. It's game on top of game. From fights to drugs to illegal relationships, these are all pitfalls that can make time hard and complicate your chance of getting out. But for some, the biggest trap of all is letting prison life get too easy. I've done so long in prison, it's kind of like home to me. It's instead of coming to prison and being scared, when I get locked up, I'm comfortable. It's totally different. When I go out the gate is when I'm scared. I grew up pretty much in a, in a real nice home, kind of wealthy, you know, a swimming pool, the whole nine, anything I ever wanted. Um, my dad got on cocaine, and we lost everything. I went from sugar to <laughs> real easy. By age 15, T develops her own drug addiction to cocaine and meth, an addiction that fuels petty crime and two prison sentences one at 17 for burglary, and one at 26 for theft. Now she's here on her third sentence for a charge that began with a friend's betrayal. So I started selling meth, and a friend of mine, when I was real young, he called me on the phone and he wanted some meth. And when I dropped it in his hand, I was surrounded by the police. He had a wire on the whole time. He set me up. With nearly a decade of experience behind her, T knows the secret to making a name for herself in a women's prison. What makes everybody like me is to look like a little boy and to be this little stud and this cute and cut my hair and do all this and I get some attention. T is what's called a stud, an inmate who adopts a male persona behind bars. Studs pair up with femmes, the more feminine women, and form partnerships. In a world without men, this is the next best thing. It's like girls gone wild when they see that new stud. It's like, ooh, what's his name? Ooh, he got dreads. Ooh, and it's a he now. They're not she's. The studs are he's. When they get in here, they get all the fan mail they could ever imagine. They get more attention when they in here than they do out there. That's why a lot of them are repeat offenders, because they can be anything they want to be in here. I love you too. Be good.